But then in August of last year, I came down here and I met up with Emma and Byron and both sets of parents and we started the planning process. Now all of you here, you all know Emma. So none of you would be surprised that Emma was in her element. <laughs> <laughs> she engaged in the planning of her and Byron ceremony with huge enthusiasm. And so it has been a particular delight for me to have had such a wonderful couple, Emma and Byron, to work with as we put together this very special ceremony for today. The only thing I didn't really bargain on was walking around so much. <laughs> but anyway. Now, the Martin family have asked me to express their appreciation to the Waterford Quaker community for the use of this beautiful venue, which is magnificently decorated for today, and it just looks terrific. Now, Emma attended play school here as a small child and years ago. Years ago. And uh, later, years ago. <laughs> Rafe and Emma went to the adjacent school, Newtown, where, where I had been. So this is a place that means a lot to the Martin family. Now, we are very pleased to have all four of Emma and Byron's parents with us today. And it is a particular pleasure that Byron's grandmother, Mariah Sharp, has also been able to be with us. As we think about marriage, our mind looks both ways, both backwards and forward, and we recognize the importance of understanding where our families come from so that we can protect the heritage that they have handed down to us and knit it into our future life together. In looking backwards, we remember Emma and Byron's other grandparents now departed. For Emma, we remember Georgie and Jim Bryce at their home in Donegal. <coughs> Hilda and Jim Martin from Lancashire. For Byron, we remember Alec Sharp, originally from Dundee, but who spent his later years in Glasgow, and George and Maggie Smith from Glasgow. We also remember all our departed relatives and friends, in particular, I know Byron and Emma's good friend, Andrew Singleton, and Byron's cousin, Chris Findlay. They're very much in your thoughts today, and you, I know you wish they could have been here. Now, the vows that Emma and Byron will confirm here this afternoon in the presence of those they love and those whose friendship they enjoy and value will demonstrate their love and commitment now and in the future. <coughs> Many of you, I'm sure all of you here today, have a special relationship with either Emma or Byron or, or both of them. And your presence here this afternoon adds significance to this ceremony and support to their marriage. In the years ahead, as Emma and Byron adapt to changing circumstances, it may be to you they will turn for support company and laughter. In this event, your support will be all the more valuable for your having been here today. <coughs> now I think you've heard quite enough from me. During this ceremony, we are going to have two readings, and we're going to have the first one now, and it's going to be read for us by Melissa. Melissa. Thank you. Please step forward and read. Thank you. Rocks, pebbles, and sand. A philosophy professor stood before his class with some items in front of him. When class began, he wordlessly picked up a large empty mayonnaise jar and proceeded to fill it with rocks about two inches in diameter. He then asked the students if the jar was full. They agreed that it was. The professor then picked up a box of pebbles, poured them into the jar, and lightly shook it. The pebbles, of course, rolled into the open areas between the rocks. The students laughed. He asked the students again if the jar was full. They agreed that it was. 
<coughs> the professor then picked up a box of sand and poured it into the jar. Of course, the sand filled up everything else. Now, said the professor, I want you to recognise that this is your life. The rocks are the important things. Your family, your partner, your health, your children. Anything that is so important to you that if it were lost, you would be nearly destroyed. The pebbles are the other things in life that matter, but on a smaller scale. The pebbles represent things like your job, your house, your car. The sand is everything else, the small stuff. If you put the sand or the pebbles into the jar first, there is no room for the rocks. The same goes for your life. If you spend all your energy and time on the small stuff, material things, you will never have room for the things that are truly most important. Pay attention to the things that are critical in your life. Play with your children. Take your partner out dancing. There will always be time to go to work, clean the house, give a dinner party and fix the disposal. Wise words. In your own life, be sure to take care of the rocks first, the things that really matter. <coughs> Remember, the rest is only pebbles and sand. It's a wonderful reading, isn't it? Well done. Thank you very much indeed. Now today, as we've said, is a day full of joy and happiness as we celebrate this wonderful occasion. But as we know, there is a serious side to marriage, and I just want to say a few words now to reflect this. Marriage is, first and foremost, a celebration of the love which two people share. <coughs> 